Wi-Fi shit the bed, so uh, we're going to continue the tour right now. All right, we're back. Sorry. We're back. So going back in the studio. Oh, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll only bother Sergio for a few more minutes. So if you're back, we're sorry we lost the Wi-Fi, but we're reconnected, and we're inside the studio with Sergio here, okay. who is a master of neon glass blowing. Maestro. 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 That's the that's the proper term. Um, so after after Sergio makes the bends, you can see this is the piece that he was just sort of like fiddling with, and if we were going to be uh, if we were going to be moving on to the next phase, what he would do is he'd take this tube and he would tack an electrode onto either side. Um, and then he would kind of take it over to the pump, which is over in the corner, and it would get filled with um, either neon or argon mercury mix, like I said. Um, I guess I can talk a little bit about the different colors of neon, like how yeah. we get the different colors in the tubes. Um, like I said, neon itself is typically this orange-red color. Um, and blues and whites and pinks are often argon mercury mix. We get the colors basically either through stained glass or phosphorin coated glass, which this is. You can see that it's been a clear tube that's been coated with this phosphorin coating on the inside. So it's a combination of the sort of coloring that's on the glass and also the gas. Like I said, neon itself is orange red and argon mercury is blue. And you can see on the walls a few other gases we we use sparingly, the very top one over there underneath uh, the Tesla's photo is argon, mm -hmm. and then right below that is helium, that kind of pink uh, color, okay. and then argon mercury. Is argon a little bit less vivid? Because it doesn't seem as bright as the others. It is. It's exactly less vivid. In fact, it's really hard for it to function in like regular daylight. When I was pointing at the useful project, it has all argon. Oh. I really love it. It's an amazing. It's beautiful. Uh, when it's isolated, it's this beautiful luminescent lavender light, which mm -hmm. is amazing. It's kind of yeah, easy color. So, someone asked again, I think you mentioned, but what is this white powder that's inside the tube? This is uh, phosphorin coating. So, and I'm not a phosphorin expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I couldn't really tell you, I couldn't give you like a chemist's answer as to like what's in the phosphorin, but basically different colors of this powder, it starts off as a powder, gets um, sort of attached to the inside of this tube. We don't really do any of that stuff ourselves. Some countries, some glass shops, more frequently colored ground tubes. We sort of get ours from um, the remaining neon suppliers in the U.S., of which there aren't very many. I mean, like six to ten. I think. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, so we're very narrow. Our color palette is kind of narrow. It's mm -hmm. not that much. We really think. I mean, we're interested between forty and sixty colors. What is he working on over here now? He is working on. Let's see here. Let's not touch the fire. George Horner is an artist. And I think this one says, Satan is happy with your progress. So, George is a really awesome guy. He Weird. lives locally. Um, and he, he makes really funny neon art. And I think he actually is making several pieces for an upcoming show, I want to say. Um, and what are the, these you know, little dudes are still on? What are, are these for like the small, the small, the small things? Yeah, he doesn't, he uses these torches, these hand torches, we call these for sort of attaching the electrodes and uh, for attaching the mercury traps. Oh, you can see the, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's a pulsing. Mm -hmm. It's snaky. Oh, yeah. They call that snaky. Just don't get too close to oh, the yeah. stack because it's a pretty high voltage transmission. Oh, so this is the pump. This is the pump. Sergio, do you want to just explain how you pump? Do you want to give it the quick? Um, but well, basically, like he, he takes the piece and he puts it over here on the pump, and it gets cleared out of all the impurities. It gets heated to a high temperature, sealed off, back filled with whatever the gas. You can see the gas is sort of sitting oh, yeah. in the cement of the pump, and this is the neon, and that's like, on the other side. Cool. So, it right. really hasn't changed that much. It's neon's pretty much made the same way as neon. You all, you, they all probably saw it from back there, but again, he was saying that the argon is. How would you say? It burns, it burns a little less bright? It's a little less intense. It's a little less intense than the other gases. Yep. Argon, helium, mercury, and mercury. Cool. Alright. Let's, uh, let's leave Sergio alone. Thank, thank, thank you very you, much. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs>
Do you guys want to go downstairs? We'll yeah, yeah we'll let's go. downstairs. Here we are. Still good? This is our basement space, just more uh, production space. Mm -hmm. um, this is where we keep our CNC machine. Actually, uh, yeah. time period to see this restoration project Whoa. that we've done. Look at this. This is an old Best Western crown. Whoa. And then on the top of the post, yeah. it came from right outside San Diego. A friend of ours bought it, and he asked us to restore it, which we did. Just here is what it looks like. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Wow. Like an on and off switch at this point. Oh, it's just yeah. But what's in here, and you can kind of hear it if you're close. You get this little like tick, 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 mm -hmm. tick. That's an old mechanical animator that's got a motor attached to it, and it has oh. contacts that just turn on and off. Huh. And the contacts are connected to this string of white bolts. Yeah. So that's how you get this really cool effect. Wow, that's great. Um, if we come over here, this is our and. Um, a lot of times for signs, we end up sort of cutting substrates or like support material. That's mm -hmm. easy on the wall. Maybe the alphabet is all stuff that was kind of cut on the mm -hmm. machine. So I am a huge fan of cutting letter forms and making sort of dimensional stuff. So a lot of that stuff sort of happens. Down here. Is the CNC is that programmable where you can it, you know you can write in a pattern and so I mean you do it all through Peter and exactly that yeah. thing kind of and yeah we take send like, it over we take like an illustrator drawing mm -hmm. of like whatever the letter is you know it's like dream catchery shape yeah would have like. This would have been a hand drawing, yep. right? And then it got translated into Illustrator, and I turned it into a vector file. Yeah. It's a piece of aluminum. And then this machine, you put a piece of sheet material down. Yep. And then this machine, which is basically a router on a gantry that yep. moves according to the Cartesian coordinates, x, y, it reads the drawing, it cuts the material, Whoa. and translates. That's and great. That's pretty cool. We've got the... Yeah, this is Not incredible. Not there. Not Rushmore was an awesome President's Day window that was done by one of our favorite people to work with named David Howie, who's the head of visual over at Burn Equipment. Mm. If you've ever seen the movie, I feel like it's always on airplanes lately the last couple of years. It's a movie called Bury My Ashes, Scatter My Ashes at Burn Equipment. Oh. And he's in the movie and kind of steals the show. Oh, really? The rest of the visual department. <laughs> nice. It's kind of amazing. Um, this mess of glass on the table that you're seeing is actually a salvage project. These are really old glass tubes. They were probably bent in the 1940s or 1950s, which is probably a good time to say like neon actually has a really long life. It's not like fluorescent tubes. Mm -hmm. It can last for like literally year. Like I, the best example I can give is that there's a, a cafeteria in LA called Clifton's, mm -hmm. and they had put this neon sign up in the 30s, and at some point they walled over the neon, but forgot to unplug it. And when they went to the renovations two years ago, the neon was still on. Really? So it for like 70 years. Wow. wow. So we think these tubes are from the 40s and the 50s. This is a um, neon from an old liquor store sign ah. that was on the Upper West Side called Mitchell's. So do you, do you kind of go and pick or scavenge them and then well, use them? Or you know, just... we're, we're such fans of yeah. old neon in New York, and there's so little bit left in New York. Mm -hmm. That we really try to kind of like support whatever salvage option. Yeah, of course. Do. If you look over here, these are all the metal letters. This is what the neon would have been housed in. Ah, yeah, yeah. Stainless yep. channel letters on Nice. Um, otherwise, the basement is more or less a like living graveyard of all mm -hmm. the older work that we've done over the years. Um, this was a Chinese place on Bleecker. This giant letter E back here was part of this huge, probably like Whoa. 100 foot by 100 foot, this was the smallest letter on the sign. It's a 100 foot by 100 foot sign called Pacific Eagle Close, mm -hmm. it was around the corner, uh, and they kind of dropped the whole sign about two years ago through the dumpster, so we went to that dumpster. What do you do with the, re once you refurbish these pieces of glass, what do you do with them? Do people buy them? We don't really sell them, I mean, we kind of, kind of have stuff around here in the shop. I have a house in Pennsylvania that's kind of turned into a, you know, jelly's Stuff that ends up in the backyard. But we try to kind of like hang them up and put the glass in them. Um, sometimes they get rented, sometimes they get used for photo shoots. Yeah. Cool. Nice. All these chandeliers, too. Yeah, that's um, what's now it feels like kind of a classic design. That was designed by Matt, the, um, the founder, the owner. Nice. See, so that's like more glass storage. We yeah. do quite a bit of like rental stuff in the film industry. Oh, Prop sure. And stuff like that, sort of nice. Um, yeah. That's 
general tour, you can see the range of white pieces of neon that we use over here. This wall is beautiful. Hi, everybody. Just tripped. <laughs> People love this wall for um, whatever reason. I think it's because it's, it's so, it's like white and kind of cool and yeah. calming. And I don't know. It's really nice. Um, do you guys have questions for me while we're down here about any of this stuff? Um, I have a question. So, yeah. You've already touched a little bit that you rent to the film industry, but who do you say like the majority of your clients are? You've already mentioned that you aid artisans when they have gallery shows. Who's buying all this? I mean, I think it's, a lot of people should buy this. It's beautiful. It's like all it's like all types, and that's the, kind of the weird part about this. The work is that like it really changes from week to week. Like we don't really know who's going to kind of come to the door. But typically, we do work for artists. We do work for commercial clients that are either having have storefronts and they need neon inside something. Um, or they need something embellished for a window, or we're doing stuff for people who are having a wedding and want wedding neon, and they need something yeah. for their child's room. It's, it's all the kind of fancy guys. It's an architect coming Full through range. with a specialty project. We did a project for the W Hotels about a year ago, and they were like, we need like this 40 foot bar area filled, but it should be like, really contextual to like the spirit of Times Square, old and new. Mm -hmm. So that was a fun one because there was a lot of like design elements yeah. and sort of conceptualizing, and then producing this whole thing and dealing with the technical stuff. So nice. it really kind of changes all the time. Right here. Someone made a joke about how when they think of neon, they think of like the old school girls, girls, girls kind of signs. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever? Have you guys ever made a girls, girls, girls sign? Yeah, we have. We've made several <laughs> of them. And I'll tell you who. Yeah, it was like it's it's funny because the context has shifted so much over the last fifty years, right? Like this idea of neon being the sort of like CD thing in yeah. the 50s and the 60s has, has you, you kind of you kind of go towards that now. Like Stella McCartney did a bit of this play three years ago. It was girls, girls, girls. It was boys, boys, boys. Mm -hmm. boys, 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 boys. But, um, it's weird to see it sort of alter and, and sort of change form over the years. You know, it was like a wonder material when it came out. People were like, "Oh my God, neon is this amazing magic thing." And then by the 50s, they were it was this widespread cultural association of it being associated with like sort of seedy downtown bad was it areas. is there like was it very cheap to produce at that time is that why i mean like you don't expect cd places to kind of have a big budget you know so maybe was it like cheap to produce cheap to buy or i think it was always sort of an expensive thing to be honest with you and oh really if, if you want to like get deeper into the history there's actually a really good book by this guy tom rinaldi who wrote a book called neon nyc and he makes this point that um it's like neon became a sort of territory of the vernacular really quickly because like for a minute big corporations had neon mm -hmm. but it was a very like because there's yeah. so much maintenance because it's all it's got to be handmade mm -hmm. and, and it is kind of expensive to yeah. and then maintain um they you see that this immediate shift in the 50s and 60s over to like this like sort of vacuum form plastic and like yeah you know, simpler sort of signs so it's it's like long had a place in like mom and pop shops mm -hmm. in new york and like sort of smaller operations because it's so particular yeah would you say that neon is making a, like a new comeback? I mean, you're already mentioning that, and I think it's very obvious because I see neon now everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I think in some sense in that New York, <laughs> there's like less shops. For, like, if we were standing here in 1950, there would have been like, you know, 400 shops, like us, yeah. 300 shops. I don't know. There's a lot more at one point. So they're just like what we're experiencing is probably a higher. We're seeing more because yeah. there's less mm -hmm. neon people now. Yeah. Place. But yeah, there seems to be a general interest in it. I think that like we're always trying to look for what the, like I love the past the history of me and it's fantastic but I really like talking about what we're going to be doing with it or how we're like thinking forward with it which is why it's great to be here because you're always running yeah. sort of in these weird cross currents with other you never, clients. You never know who's gonna yeah. Right and sometimes it's weird because you know sometimes the commercial clients will bring demands that end up really like benefiting the art clients. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. 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 They'll be pushing one thing and something will be like I love that Effect. I'm going to mm -hmm. use that for my project, right? So, you know, it's it's great to be in a place where there's like so much experiment. Yeah, and so I mean, you kind of just mentioned, you know, you're looking for the future in some sense, right? So like, do you have anything that something like, oh, this was a really unique way that I saw it being used, and I'd like to do more of that, or something maybe outside? You know, it seems like kind of commercial and artists are the two bigger buckets which a lot of things fall into, right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything like, oh, this was such an interesting way that we use it? Like, I'd love to do more of that. Or like, what what are you looking forward to? I guess. Is the um, we easiest, got we got like a new way. a new fixture design coming up, which I'm kind of mm -hmm. looking forward to. Um, I'm always kind of thrilled to be working on like just sort of specifics now on the spot. Um, it's 
I'm always looking for sort of like new ways to use the old medium in the sense that like we're changing like the content and stuff. Yeah. Like the, the, we're kind of somewhere in between like the, the medium and the message sometimes. Like it's, the glass hasn't changed. Yeah. Like the stuff is still the same old thing. Yeah. But you're always trying to figure out kind of new ways to like use this. Yeah. Cool. Um, I mean, I was going to say, we're going to do the interview upstairs, but we're already kind of getting into it down here. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're really quiet, right. I guess, right? Uh, so I guess, you know, can you, you want, we didn't, we haven't really talked about how this company started, you know, where did you guys come from? I mean, how, what's yeah. the, the genesis of it? Um, the company really all starts with uh, Matt. So mm -hmm. Matt's the founder, and he kind of uh, had a little neon operation at school or college mm -hmm. in Boston, and he decided to move down to New York and had a small operation here, and then it sort of grew over the years. Really? It's been in this building for probably about 13 years now, oh, wow. I would say. Yeah, and it's sort of like altered and changed over the years and kind of expanded as the need. So does Matt. He bends and he does, he does a lot of that work. Or yeah, Matt may still do, do more of the bending and now Sergio does yeah. most all of it. You know, Matt's sort of like generally the orchestra yeah, 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 yeah. of the band, mm -hmm. so to speak. And what about, what? what's your role specifically more? Just uh, also, I mean. well, we all wear a lot of hats around. Yeah, here, of course. Generally speaking, I'm the designer. Uh -huh. uh, although a lot of what ends up, the work that I end up doing tends to be like a lot of translation work too. Like mm -hmm. sometimes people come in with a napkin sketch, or sometimes they can do like, oh, sure. Idea. They're like, hey. so it's my sort of place to sort of figure out how we're going to nice. turn that into like a fun project. So sort of like haphazard engineering, general drawing work, uh, general planning. Sure. Um, I feel like we. Don't have questions. I feel like we should I, maybe just do one more walk around because yeah, I feel I mean, like people like seeing yeah, I mean, your beautiful uh, art. Yeah, I mean, anything, you know, if you, do you guys do specific exhibits or you have anything you want to kind of promote or plug, like website, I, I don't, whatever you we want. Do, I mean, we do free, have a new free, website. Go, go nuts. So. We do have a new website right. that we're kind of psyched about. Nice. We also have a new fixture that was in kind of in development right now. Okay. If you guys want to see that, I can show it to you. Uh, yeah, yeah I mean, let's, we'd love to see like, it. What do, you, what do you mean by new fixture? So. Well, you know, we talked about fixtures. Should we, should we like, shut this down? Like this. Is, I can stay on. Okay. Um, this is like a fixture. So this is like a, a oh, okay. new chandelier fixture. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at kind of like new Okay, you just need a picture, yeah. Thanks, Joe. We also make Halloween costumes in our spare time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys do the, the milk signs for Momo Fuku. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a fixture uh -huh. that we've kind of been in developing yeah. like our prototype fixture, but it's kind of based on um, sort of like Islamic patterns. And specifically, there's this place called Ulana, which is the painter Frederick Church's house up on the Hudson. Mm -hmm. And he had like all these really elaborate painted patterns throughout the house. So this neon is sort of based on some of the pattern work that's up there. So mm -hmm. we made a couple of these now. We're talking about sort of trying to develop them. Cool, yeah. Very awesome. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, there it is. So there's the arrow. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, I mean. Uh, I think that's about sums it up. I mean, we covered a lot. So, uh, all right. Thanks. Thanks a lot, man. Thank uh, you.